In 1911, the Santa Fe Railway unveiled what they called the largest locomotive in the world at the time. Trade papers covered it heavily. It drew attention from engineers across the industry. The machine weighed over 600,000 pounds, had 20 driving wheels arranged in four sets of five, and looked as if someone had welded two freight locomotives together under one impossibly long boiler. Santa Fe built 10 of them in their own railroad shops in Topeka, Kansas. They numbered them 3,000 through 3,009 and assigned them mainly to steep grades, including California's Cayenne Pass and the Tehachapi Loop. Three years later, the same railway quietly started taking them apart in those same shops. From 1915 to 1918, all 10 had been converted back into regular locomotives, erased from the active roster. No press release about the conversion, no public explanation of what went wrong. The machines that were supposed to revolutionize freight hauling simply ceased to exist. And here is the part that should make you sit up straight. In that exact same year, 1918, a completely different railroad on the other side of the country ordered 10 locomotives with the identical wheel arrangement from a professional builder. Those machines ran for 34 years without major modifications. Same concept, same configuration, same basic engineering principle. One set worked exactly as intended. One set was dismantled in corporate shame before the decade was over. This is the story of how Santa Fe management convinced themselves they knew better than the specialists who built locomotives for a living, and exactly what that arrogance cost them. The idea behind the 210102 10 2 wheel arrangement was simple enough on the surface. Santa Fe already operated successful 2102 10 2 freight locomotives, a wheel arrangement they had essentially invented in 1903, and that carried their company name across the industry. Someone in management looked at those machines and figured, if two sets of five driving wheels work so well, why not four sets of five? Double the pulling power with a single crew lower operating costs. The math made sense on a boardroom chalkboard. The execution is where things went sideways. Instead of contracting Baldwin or Alco to design these giants, Santa Fe decided to do it themselves, in their own Topeka shops, with their own engineers who had never designed anything on this scale. They took 20 freight locomotives built by Baldwin with a 210 2 wheel arrangement, stripped them down, and combined them into 10 articulated monsters. Baldwin supplied some components, including low-pressure cylinders for the front engine and a distinctive rounded tender that crews called the turtleback. But the critical component, the boiler that would feed steam to four enormous cylinders, was designed and built entirely by Santa Fe. That decision is where everything started falling apart. The specifications looked impressive on paper. The engine alone weighed about 616,000 pounds. Tractive effort was about 111,000 pounds, more than anything else on American rails. It was the largest articulated locomotive yet built at that point. Railway Age Gazette ran a feature in April 1911 calling it the largest locomotive, and Santa Fe made sure everyone knew. What the coverage did not mention was that these machines struggled to maintain steam pressure at higher speeds under load. The boiler was too long, too narrow, and the firebox was too small to generate steam at any useful speed. The locomotives could pull enormous tonnage. They could only do it slowly. Santa Fe sent them to California, to the Cajun Pass between Barstow and San Bernardino, and to the famous Tehachapi Loop near Bakersfield. The plan was to haul trains weighing 2,000 tons over steep grades with a single locomotive instead of double-heading with two separate engines. The reality was that even in helper service, where they only had to push trains uphill at low speed, they could not perform adequately. Crews started calling them the magnificent failures. Management called them nothing at all. By 1915, four years after the triumphant press coverage, Santa Fe began quietly converting them back to standard 2102 locomotives. They did not call it scrapping. They did not call it a failure. The official terminology was rebuilding to original configuration, as if the 21010-2 version had never existed. By 1918, the conversion was complete. 
The tender survived and went on to serve behind other locomotives for decades. The engines themselves simply vanished from company records. No Santa Fe 21010 was preserved. There is no museum example. There is nothing left except photographs and the memory of what railroad workers called them, forgotten. Now, here is what turns embarrassment into a full corporate indictment. In 1918, the same year Santa Fe finished erasing their mistake from the roster, the Virginian Railway took delivery of 10 locomotives with a 21010 two-wheel arrangement from Alco Schenectady Works. Same wheel arrangement, same articulated mallet design, completely different outcome. The Virginian machines had 48-inch low-pressure cylinders, the largest ever fitted to any American locomotive. Their boiler was one of the widest ever fitted to a steam locomotive, deliberately designed short and fat to maintain proper steam production under load. Alco knew something that Santa Fe management apparently did not. You cannot stretch a boiler to fit an existing frame and expect it to perform. The Virginian 21010 two locomotives hauled coal trains in the 15,000 to 17,000 ton range. One locomotive, number 808, moved 110 loaded coal gondolas from Princeton, West Virginia to Norfolk, Virginia. They operated for 34 years with almost no significant modifications and were eventually replaced by electric locomotives on the steepest grades. They were retired in the early 1950s, having done exactly what they were designed to do. The comparison is devastating. Santa Fe built 10 machines in-house that lasted 3 to 7 years and had to be taken apart. The Virginian ordered 10 machines from professionals that ran for more than 3 decades. Same concept, same wheel count, same basic engineering principle. The difference was not the technology. The technology worked fine when someone who actually built locomotives for a living designed it. The difference was that someone at Santa Fe signed off on boiler proportions that any experienced locomotive engineer would have questioned. This was not an engineering accident. This was a management decision. Someone approved it. Someone looked at a boiler that was too long and too narrow for the cylinder demand it would face. And they said yes. Probably because building in-house was cheaper. Probably because they wanted to prove they could do it themselves. Whatever the internal reasoning, the railroad invested a substantial sum in 1911 and then had to spend even more undoing the mistake. The Santa Fe never tried anything like it again. They went back to ordering from Baldwin and Alco like everyone else. The Topeka shops returned to maintenance and repairs, which is what they were actually good at and the two 1010 two-wheel arrangement passed into history with exactly two examples, one that proved it could work, and one that showed what happens when management thinks it knows better than the people who do this for a living. The Virginian machines were eventually scrapped too, replaced by newer technology, but they were scrapped after decades of reliable service. The Santa Fe machines were taken apart in secret because the railroad was too embarrassed to admit what had happened. They were called magnificent failures. Santa Fe preferred not to call them anything at all. 